All right, we're live for another um, Keeping It Real Masterminds, and it's our ninth episode of 2015, and I'm really, really, really excited about today's session. Um, the session is Mindset and Skills to List FISBOs with um, uh, Matthew Ferry. I was going to say coach, trainer, and all that stuff, but he's, he's an awesome real estate trainer, Matthew Ferry. He's been in uh, training for the last 20-plus years. He's coached over 8,000 real estate agents, either one-on-one -on -one or in um, group trainings. And um, he's also uh, just the master of the mindset. He is a, he takes, he's a master of teaching people skills, but not only that, but the, uh, teaching them to get the proper mindset to take it to the next level. So I'm really, really excited. And we have two great guests on. We have Calvin Shopshryer from Cattanooga, Cattanooga Tennessee. And we have Renee Thompson from uh, Tampa, Florida. And um, my co-host is Frank Klesitz of Viral Marketing. Say hello, Frank. Hello, everybody. And um, just wanted to let everyone know if we, we wouldn't be putting these on if it wasn't help of Frank and his staff and his team to put these things on. Is it's that right. a dog in the background, Frank? Yeah. I'm sorry. Dog. I just got distracted. You have a little thing bouncing <laughs> around back there. So, what the hell is that? Anyway, we're live, so uh, we're not cutting that. Anyway, so I'm really excited. Um, just uh, for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Jeff Manson. I'm a Hawaii real estate broker. I've been in real estate business for 20 plus years as well. I started back when Matthew started coaching as well. That's when I, I started following him and his father um, back 20 something years ago, and they really excelled my real estate business. And then I'm also the founder of Real Geeks, okay? <clears throat> and I just wanted to let you know if you do want to get notified on these and you just happen to uh, stumble upon us off the internet or some sort of promotion, if you want to get notified, you can go to uh, keepingitreal.com and on the right side, you can opt in with your name and email. We're not going to spam you. We'll just send you invites of these when we're doing them. You can go to the Google, the Real Geeks Google Plus page and follow that. You can go to the uh, Real Geeks Facebook page and follow us on there and um, I think you can also subscribe on the Real Geeks YouTube channel because if you subscribe, you'll get a notification when they're doing that. Um, anyway, so we're really excited. Um, hey, Frank, why don't you take it over from here? Yeah, so what we want to cover today is this is about listing the mindset and skills needed to approach expireds. So I think what I like to start off... For sale about, by owners. For I'm sale sorry. by owners, brothers, yeah. For sale by owners, long what day. Did, what did for sale by owners. I think <laughs> I said that in the promo video too, but for sale by owners... You know, Calvin and Renee. Calvin, why don't you tell us some of your fears and concerns approaching expireds? Renee, I'd like you to tell us some of your fears and concerns with approaching expireds. And then Matthew, we'll have you take it from there. Sound good? So, Calvin, That's you're first. Great, yep. Okay, expireds or FISBOs? FISBOs. 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 <laughs> That's our next episode. Next We're having an expires episode right. in seven. What seven, are your seven, concerns, seven, Calvin, ahead, with right. FISBOs and approaching sure. them? Um, I guess the biggest concern is like how not to come on too pushy. Um, we noticed that this year several agents have become very, very aggressive when it comes to, to, to dealing with FISBOs. And, you know, we, we lost a deal over one because they, they felt like we weren't passionate enough um, about trying to sell their home, so we lost it to another agent. How do we know when we're coming on too, too, too hostile or too pushy, and, and, and where's the right balance for that? And then the other thing, the other objection is how do we beat those mega agents that have those 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 special deals like um, I'll buy your home if they if I don't sell it and, and things like that. How do we overcome those? Great questions. And Renee? Um, I think I'm along the same lines of Calvin. I, I don't like to appear salesy. So how do I, when I see a for sale by owner, how do I approach them to let them know that I truly just want to help and I'm not in it for me, but really to help them. Fair enough. <clears throat> Hi, Matthew. All right. I'm just making some notes. Help them. Great. Okay, these are pretty standard things, guys, that uh, people go through when it comes to for sale by owners or expires or any other kind of lead source. Um, concerns that we have that are standing in the way. I mean, let's be honest. Renee, yes. um, if, we're, if we really assess the situation, you know what to do to get more for sale by owners, right? It's going to be some combination of talking to them, mailing them, emailing them, texting them, whatever, door knocking. It's going to be some combination, right? Correct. Yes, sir. There's going to be, be something that you're going to do. And, and it's not anything new. 
I can have you look at, um, you know, there's going to be 20 other trainers lined up will tell you exactly what you need to do to do for sale by owners. But if we're being completely honest, there is a, there's a mindset block that stops you from actually talking to them. Would you agree with that? I agree. I probably have a mindset of rejection. Great. So I'm going to write that down as well as like a fear of rejection. Great. And then Calvin, um, uh, if you're being honest, buddy, you, you, we don't need to teach you what to do to go get more for sale by owners. No, no, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a matter of calling. Yeah, absolutely. Is um, call them or mail them something or door knock them, blah, 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 write something. Right. But when they've talked to so many different agents, how do you how do you set yourself apart from them? That's the difference. So then there's there is uh, there's two components that we're really talking about here. Is I'd like to fine tune my um, my value prop. So that when I speak to them, they um, they experience me as special or different or unique, making my conversation with them easier. That's okay. one part, right? Yes. Um, but if we if we're being really honest, before we even get to that, is there's some mental concern that stops me from making the call in general. I'm not I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna engage um, with full force because I have these concerns that are unresolved. Would you agree with that? I would say that, yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to get that out of the way because what most people do is they spend all of their time learning new systems that they don't implement. Or they learn new skills or new ideas or new thoughts or I'm going to buy this new thing or I'm going to buy this book. It's going to tell me how to do FISBOs or I just downloaded this new course on you know FISBO Mastery. And in the end, the thing that stops 99% of all agents is their mindset. So what we want to do is we want to identify what is that. Then we want to talk about some of the, um, the aspects of your mindset that are getting in your way. And then we'll move from there. Okay. So a couple things that I want to just uh, remind you of right off the bat. The first thing is that we know what to do. We don't do it. So Renee, you know what to do. You're not doing it. Calvin, you know what to do. You're not doing it. What's in the way? Well, what's in the way is something that I have noticed is paradoxical for all of us, not just real estate agents, all of us, and I call that the success paradox. Okay. And the success paradox is very simple. Your desire for success is met with unconscious resistance. You know what to do, you go to do it, but something stops you, you get distracted. I don't know, you have to, suddenly you're overanalyzing, you're overpreparing, maybe I need to do that, I can do some other research, for, I need a donut, right? I mean, just all of a sudden, you aren't doing the thing that would cause you to get success, and it creates something called agent underperformance. So agent underperformance is the state of not earning up to or beyond your income potential, given your current state of skills, your mastery over the marketplace, your understanding, all of that, something's limiting you. And that, that limitation comes down to something that I have coined back in 1991 called the drunk monkey. And the drunk monkey is just me not understanding how to uh, speak correctly. It's grammatically incorrect, just so you know. Should be the drunken monkey, but back then I didn't know this. And it's a derivative of just the monkey mind is really what it was that I started to call all this negative self-talk in my head. It's getting in the way. So it has six components to it that get in the way of real estate agents. And I want, I want to just brief very quickly what those components are with you so that I can then coach you from the perspective of what is the mindset malfunction that's getting in the way. I'm going to read right off my sheet so that I speak it to you correctly, OK? okay. So the first one that I'd like you guys to write down is called forecasting the negative. Forecasting the negative. So these are unconscious reflexes. And what, so I want you to think about what a reflex is. If I hit your knee with the hammer, what does your knee do? It bounces. It, it bounces up. And it bounces up, Calvin, because there's some reflex there. Um, Calvin, if you walk over, you pet a dog, and the dog bites you, the next time you see a dog, what's the reflex? Either, either to fight back or run. That's right. Either <laughs> attack the dog so that you aren't dominated by it or run away from the dog. There's a reflex that occurs. So what I'm saying is that you are being stopped, but not by an awareness. It's not like you don't know what to do. You're actually being stopped by what I am calling unconscious reflexes. So these are automatic responses that are stopping you. The first one 
is forecasting the negative. So if you wrote that down, here's all it is. It's just that the drunk monkey in your head thinks that it's psychic. It thinks it knows what's going to come, what's mm -hmm. going to happen. And it doesn't. But let's be honest. Um, what does your mind say about for sale by owners, Calvin? Honestly, I'll be honest, we've lost a lot of sales just because we weren't confident in the pricing strategy. Um, where we thought homes would be overpriced and other agents have came in and, and priced them high and they sold. We didn't take those houses because of that. So, so it, might, that. it might be something like this. Uh, I'm going to go and talk to for sale by owner and I'm going to come in too low and they're not going to hire me. Or I'm going to go talk to the for sale by owner and the other mega agent is saying, oh, if I don't sell it, I'll just buy it from you and I right. can't compete with that. In other words, you're inventing stories in advance about how it's not going to work. How's that treating you? Is it, is it causing you to get lots of for sale by owners? Um, it's causing us to lose quite a few. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you have Forecasting the negative, the drunk monkey thinks that it's psychic. It's not psychic. It has no idea what's going to happen, but you live like it does. And this is a very important thing for you. You, you, uh, you and I both evolved from our ancestors, and our ancestors have passed down genetically their understanding of the world. And one of the things that has made us a very successful species on the planet is our ability to forecast what's going to happen and navigate it. it that's, that's a good thing. So I want you guys to notice where this is happening. The second one I want you to write down for me is the desire to fit in. The desire to fit in. It's an unconscious reflex. So what, it's what Jeff was talking about um, before we all got together or before we went live, which is um, so often our ego gets in the way. We want to look good. We want to be smart. We want people to like us. We want to win favor. We want, and this is a totally normal thing. But it actually stands in the way of real estate sales because many of the things that you have to do to be a successful real estate agent don't fit with your family protocol. So your desire to fit in is stopping you. The other one I want you to write down for me is holding others accountable to agreements that they didn't make. So Renee, we were trained by our parents and the people that raised us and our family, our culture, our religion, all of this stuff, and we operate like those are the right rules. The way, the way that I was raised was the right way to operate. And for the most part, it has served us well, and you should stick to those things. But it is a fatal mistake to okay. hold other people accountable to your way of operating. It leads to war in all of its forms. And gotcha. one of the things that's stopping us with for sale by owners is for sale by owners are breaking our rules right off the bat. Their way of operating, their do-it-yourself kind of attitude their arrogance that in our experience, their arrogance, these kinds of things trigger inside of us like, wait, you're not supposed to behave this way, and we make them wrong, and of course, people don't listen to you when you make them wrong. The other thing that I want you to write down for me, guys, is avoiding making the same mistake twice. This is an unconscious reflex. It's exactly what we talked about with you, Calvin. Calvin, you walk over, you pet a dog, the dog bites you, the next time you see a dog, the avoiding making the same mistake twice unconscious reflex kicks in. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. but what happens for us is that our, our mind, the drunk monkey, does something called generalizing. So suddenly I raised my hand in school and when the teacher called on me I got it wrong and then I was embarrassed. And then I asked this girl to go out on a date, and she said no, and then I felt bad. And then later in life, I went after this job, and they rejected me. And then it just stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks. And suddenly, when I go to make that phone call, I get this, my heart is beating, and I'm afraid that I'm going to make some mistake that I've made in the past. Which also goes... Go ahead, Renee. Uh, I, I just said, I can see that. It's a... It, if you can catch it, you can do something about it. If you can't catch it, then you're stuck. And that's really the deal. We want to create some awareness here. Two more. One is following rules that don't exist. So if you write that down, because I'm going to ask you about it here in a moment. Following rules that don't exist. So um, Calvin, you were raised by a particular group in a particular region of the country who has a particular um, philosophy on life and how to operate. And there are a lot of people on the planet 
who were not raised the same way as you. I would agree with that. So you're following these rules thinking that you're doing it right. And a lot of the rules that you're following actually contradict real estate. So you have rules in place that limit your real estate business. And if you don't figure out what they are, it can really limit the business. And then the final one is so obvious. It's the unconscious reflex of avoiding failure. So there are six unconscious reflexes that we're going to look at. I want to do some coaching with you now. And this coaching comes from my mindset methodology. It's just something that I've been working on with agents for several decades now. Um, Calvin, my, my job has basically been how do you get this person who is stuck moving forward? Because the coaching that I've done in the past has been with a, a process that is tried and true and will work every single time. So if you follow the, the systems of my father, for example, you're going to make money, period. But following those systems, not easy to do. And so I developed a whole other subsystems, subsystem of ways to get the mind to get aligned. And the main way is through something called recontextualization. So recontextualization is basically changing your context, shifting from seeing it like this to seeing it like that. So I'll say it in this way. Calvin, before we knew that the world was round, we thought it was flat. And when we thought it was flat, how did that impact our exploration? It limited us. We were limited. Mm -hmm. And was the world actually flat? Absolutely not. It wasn't flat, yet the limitation existed and we did not go out past the horizon just in case we were going to fall off. Correct. So our context, how we saw the world, limited our behavior. The moment we discovered that the world was round, what did that do to our behavior? And that opened up opportunities for us. Everyone jumped on board and started traveling. We had, we, our fears and our concerns were reduced and minimized, and our desire for new and expansion was maximized. My intention for you in the exposure to the mindset methodology is to have that exact feeling occur for you, to have the limitation removed because you discovered that the limitation was nothing more than a context that you held yourself inside of that wasn't true. So let's talk about this a little bit, okay? We're going to create some awareness. That awareness will automatically make you flexible. That flexibility will then lead to new options opening up. And those new options give you power. It's really optionality. So we're going to do ladies first. We're going to jump over here to Renee. So Renee, I want to go back to my notes that I wrote down that Frank was asking you about, okay? So yes, he said, what's your deal with for sale by owners? And you said, um, I am worried that I'm going to be salesy, correct? Correct, yes. I, I don't want to be salesy. How do I approach them in a way um, that uh, lets them know that I truly want to help and that I'm not in it for me, that I'm in it to help them? And I'm, I'm, if I'm being real honest, I have a little bit of a fear of rejection going on. Correct. Tell me what happens if you call for sale by owners now based on your current skill set and your current um, uh, process, what are you afraid is going to happen? Let's just be completely honest. Let's talk directly to the drunk monkey right now. Um, I think will they be yell at you, or what will they do? You know, you know, wow, this is pretty deep. Um, I, I, I don't think that they would be so rude to slam the door in my face or hang up on me but I think they would maybe sit there and say oh you just you just want to help or it's not that you want to help me you're just looking for a commission mm. um, which is truly it truly isn't who I am in my core obviously you know we don't work for free but, but that is not my primary concern when I feel that I probably know the market a little bit better than they do. Okay, so great. I, so if we really had to dial in on that concern, 
what I'm hearing you say is that I'm afraid that they will think that I'm a selfish person and not in it for them and that I'm only in it for myself. You said that so much better than I just did. I just, I'm trying to rephrase, I'm not trying to say it better, I just want to get very succinct about it, okay? Yes, sir. So um, I want to take you through a very simple part of my, my mindset methodology. The methodology itself has, has um, 36 different little techniques and components. Some of them are real baseline. You use them almost every time. And um, the releasing attachment process is one that I fall back on a lot, and then then you expand from there. It kind of you release attachment, and then you do this thing or that thing or whatever. So we're going to start off with releasing attachment because um, oftentimes the the mindset malfunction is is holding us in place, and we're attached. So if you had to go back to the the um, six unconscious reflexes that I just brought up to you. Yes. Which ones do you think, just look over that list that you wrote down, which ones do you think are stopping you from getting, from getting on the phone and, and or starting some new for sale by owner marketing process? Um, I, well, I think number one, definitely, I've already forecasted their response. Um, and then my desire to fit in and for people to like me, um, that's stopping me because I think the automatically going to feel that I'm selfish and um, and is that also a rule that you have about selfishness is there is there some that some I, think rule so. you have? I, I just I like people to like me in, yeah. in general and um, and then also avoiding failure I, I don't I don't like to fail and and so I am a afraid of that rejection that I've already forecasted and it may not even be real. All right, you are you are getting it. So we're going to go through a process of, of releasing attachment and then we'll go from there. Okay. So the, the attachment, I just want you to think about it in this way. Attachment is an exaggerated fear of losing a positive benefit. And um, one of the, this is one of the cornerstones of the drunk monkey. The drunk monkey's job is to steer you away from danger and move you towards pleasure. That's what it's doing. And what it will, what it will um, adopt in order to get you to move away from dangerous things is exaggerations in its context about what might happen. Exaggerated images, exaggerated um, um, hallucinations and futures and, and visions about what might go on. So let's just bust it right now and okay. watch what happens to your mindset about for sale by owners okay so the first thing that we want to do is we want to we want to look and see what is the real fear like I just want you to dig into the nasty fear what is the nasty fear you get on phone with, with a for sale by owner and what's the thing that just makes your gut twist um, I, I think really um Probably somebody being very angry with me for calling. Uh, being very angry with me for calling. I remember one time, I one of my listings, somebody had called and they felt like it should be priced much lower, and they ranted on and cursed for about 30 seconds and then hung up. And I was truly troubled for almost the whole day, and I'm like, oh my god. Did this really just happen to me? Right. So you got stopped dead in your tracks over a uh, um, two-minute experience, ruined your entire day, or tied your day up emotionally. Yes. Okay, and, and you're afraid that that might happen again. Yes. So what we want to look at is how is this vision, this um, thought process, this forecasting of the negative, how is it an exaggeration? I think it's an exaggeration because it's obviously it's in my mind and, and I know um, just in life in general a moment in time doesn't um, it doesn't hold the entire future and it's just a it truly is just a moment in time and doesn't really mean anything other than that and are all for sale bounders going to yell at you and scream at you and hang up on you um, probably not 
but I'm not trying some to find might. out. Some might, right? Correct, yes. Some might, we don't know. Um, but right now what the drunk monkey thinks is that all, all for sale bounders will do this and I can't risk it because what if I lose my entire day? So the, the next thing that you want to do is you want to look at how will losing this benefit actually affect you without the exaggeration? We need to start here. This is a recontextualization we're going to do. How does it, how do you, how's it going to affect you without even, without exaggerating at all? I, I think, you know, truly realistically, the only thing that I will lose from it is about two minutes. So I'm going to lose two minutes. I talk to the person. Won't you also discover that this is probably someone that you don't want to keep on your list? Yes. So you gain, you gain the benefit of passing this one off. I'm not going to follow up on this. And you lose two minutes. And could you practice maybe some emotional techniques to get yourself back into a good place again and let it go and release it? Yes, I could. There's probably something out there where you can, you can <laughs> learn how to get yourself back in control again and move on. Right, but you have to you have to be willing to go and find that information, which means you have to be willing to say, I'm going to take on these for sale by owners, and I know for sure I'm going to get rejected periodically, and people are going to be rude periodically. So I'm going to arm myself with a few techniques that I can use to get myself emotionally back in control again. Yes. Yes. So you can do that. So I then the question becomes, can you make peace? with a periodic rejection, a person yelling at you and hanging up, and you taking two minutes to recuperate and get yourself back into a good space again, can you make peace with that loss if there's some positive benefit on the other side? I, th I think so. Um, once I learn those methods, because I think two things will happen. One, um, it won't always be the rejection that I'm, I'm automatically fearing. Um, some people may actually want to have a conversation. Um, That's exactly right. And then um, two, I think practice makes perfect. Um, so I need to practice. Yep, that's exactly right. So let me ask you this. What, it, what will actually happen if you start calling for sale by owners? What will actually happen? Um, I, I think it'll, I think it'll be a process. Um, it, it'll, I, I may get some rejection, and and I have to, as a person, need to learn how to deal with that. Um, is, there, is there an upside though to this? Is there? I mean, why are we even having the conversation? I think I may get a sale. Are we going to get just one? I may what get you, multiple sales. And what are, you, what are you committed to? Do you? What are your current sources of business? The majority of my business is by referral. I would say about ninety-eight percent right now. Right. And so referral is one great source for you. And there was a time when you first started in real estate that you weren't even good at that. Correct. People call in, you blah, 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 you say the wrong thing and screw yep. things up and all that. You learned, didn't you? I and did. now you'd like to add an additional income revenue source and you want to do it in the realm of for sale by owner. Correct. And actually, if I can go back to what your last question was, what will I gain? I think ultimately I'll, I'll gain a relationship. And if... I'll, I'll get a relationship that will trust me and, and we will form something outside of the sale that that will in turn create more referrals. Exactly right. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to just ask you a few more questions. We're going to go through another process right now and this is a process called confronting the drunk monkey's perspective. Are you ready? So yes, I sir. noticed that you're already having a different response. You're already feeling differently. I'm going to ask you to conduct an experiment. Okay. So I'd like you to consider calling 10 for sale by owners and seeing how many scream at you. Okay. And I want you, you're, you're not calling them to get the appointment. You're not calling them to get a lead. You're not doing, all you're going to do is you're just going to do a, 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 a uh, request for information. Where are you guys going? How long have you lived there? That kind of thing. Just a real simple kind of. Um, uh, you know, look up some for sale by owner scripts online. Any of them will do. They're all about the same. Just so you okay. know. Okay. Any of them will do. They're all about the same. Okay. All you're going to do is call them up, and you're just going to see, out of ten people that I talked to, how many screamed at me and hung up. Got, and do I introduce myself as a realtor? Absolutely. You do. You're going to follow. If it was me, I'm a, more of a Mike Ferry guy, so I'm going to follow the Mike Ferry 
process. I'm going to go onto his website. I'm going to download a script, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, you might be, uh, you might be with my brother Tom. So maybe you do Tom's, or maybe you're a Brian Buffini person, or got maybe it. Jeff has got some scripts for you, or a little that, whatever, right? Uh, okay. I'm, I don't care about what you say. I care about that you get on the phone, you talk to him, and you see what happens. That's it. Got it. Roger. All right, great. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to, and let's look at my time here. What I want you to do is I want you to answer these questions, and then we're going to jump over here to Calvin, okay? Yes, so sir. we're going to confront the drunk monkey's perspective. <clears throat> so you're afraid that you're going to get rejected by the for sale by owner, correct? Yes, correct. Great. How do you know that this is true? I don't because I haven't tried. Great. This is a really good answer. I'm, at, I'm literally going through a process right now that you can implement for yourself. So you can go back and watch this video and write the questions down and ask yourself these questions based on anything that is stopping you from taking action, okay? So the second question is, um, where did you learn that for sale by owners are going to scream at you, yell at you, and hang up, and you're going to be upset for the rest of the day? In my mind? Because I haven't tried. You made it up, didn't you? I did make it up. You made up a story, and now you're living like your story is true. Correct. So the world is flat, and you're not going to get out there and see what, out, what else is out there in the world. That's how I'm living it. And other people are cruising around in their boats. They're having a great time. They're visiting the Caribbean, and here you are stuck at home. Correct. They're on a beach having a margarita. You're chilling. You're, you're freaking out that you can't leave. Correct. So, let me ask you a question. Can you actually tell the future? No. So, are you, in essence, lying to yourself about the situation? I am, because I simply I can't tell the future, so I don't know what the future holds. Exactly. What would happen if you really did this? If you really started calling for sale by owners, every single week you called 20 for sale by owners, and you did that for the next three to five years relentlessly, just calling them, tuning in, being the fabulous Renee that you are, being the Renee who is loving on them, wanting to contribute, wanting to make a difference, not attached to getting the sale, just being a kind and considerate person. If you were actually doing this every single week for the next three to five years, what could this actually mean to you? Um, I think one... I think it would mean a couple of things. One, I would obviously learn to have gotten over my fear of this made-up rejection that I've, I have in my head. And um, then I, I would, I would, I would have sales because I think ultimately there's probably more, more folks that are looking to seek help but just don't know where to get it versus people that are they have their own mindset in reference to this is why I want to be a for sale by owner. Um, probably they also have a drunk monkey of what's stopping them to call me in the first place. So, so let me ask you a question. How many deals do you think, if you really became proficient at this, how many deals do you think you could add to your business every year as a result? Let's do um, some, some addition. Go for it. Okay. Um, I think I call 20 people a week. Once I got going, and once I once I became comfortable in my in the script and in my skin saying it, I would think at least fifty percent. So if I did twenty a week, that's ten a week. That's forty. Um, that's forty a month. Um, that may be overreaching it a little bit. I so, think it's overreaching. Let's let's just be honest, yeah. okay? If, if we're being completely realistic, let's just say you, five if, more. If you added one more every month to your to your business, at your current commission rate, what is your current commission rate? How much are you making average commission? Three um, percent before my split. Yeah. So what's uh, the do just the dollar amount off the top of your head? Ten thousand. So twelve times ten thousand dollars, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is an additional hundred and twenty thousand dollars in revenue into the company. Would this make a difference in your life, yes or no? Absolutely, yes. So now it's five years later and you have done nothing. I am 
$120,000 less per year, which is what five, $600,000. $600,000 you flush down the toilet just in this one zone. Correct. And who got robbed here? Did your family get robbed by your fears? Yes. Mm. And did you? are there special things that you're not able to do because of this? Yes. And there's a lot of special things you could do with an extra $120,000 a year just from this one revenue source, right? Absolutely, yes. Fantastic. So what is the most effortless action you could make starting tomorrow to get the ball rolling? Call a for sale by owner. And well, first, at first I would look up the script and Good. I would probably practice it first then call. I have to get, the only way to do it is to do it. Yeah, and even then I would recommend that for your first experiment you're going to call and contact 10. Okay. I would recommend you don't practice the script. Okay. I'd recommend you just read the script and that you see what happens and you really get scientific about it. What actually happened? I called up and blah, 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 blah. Did anyone <laughs> yell at me and hang up? Got it. And just be completely honest about that, okay? Okay. Let's see what happens. And then the next step is to start to look at what are some, what are some actual great for sale by owner procedures, tried and true, that other people have put into place. You want to start there. Okay. The only competition, Renee, is you. That's true. I agree. The only limitation is you. There's going to be people who really connect with you. And there's going to be people who don't. And the ones who do will want to do business with you. And you're currently robbing yourself, your family, and them of that opportunity with this irrational fear. You have no idea what's happening and what's going to happen. All right. Do we have your word that you're going to do at least your experiment? Yes, you have my word. All right, fantastic. Thanks for giving that to me. Calvin, you ready to jump in and do something, buddy? Sure am. Yes. Great, and Jeff, anything you want to add, or, or Frank, anything no, you want to add? Renee, thanks for putting on the spot. That was incredible. No, no, yeah, I, I, no, I just want to, I just, I would like to say one thing is I really want to thank Matthew right here. We're going to take a little intermediate break. Intermediate break. So you got, you got a couple more, a minute there, Calvin. So start thinking. <laughs> uh, I've been thinking. <laughs> that, but no, I just want to thank Matthew because um, this this training is amazing, and nobody is diving in and doing this kind of like you know they're teaching the scripts and the skills to call and do all that. And Matthew's one of the best at doing that. But he knew he was training these agents and, and on how to call the scripts, how to talk to them, what to do, and all this stuff. But then, boom, they go, okay, I'm going to go do it. And then they get stuck, like Renee and Calvin and hundreds and thousands of other agents. And um, the training that you're doing and coming on here on the Keeping It Real, there's thousands and thousands of agents that are getting free training. Let me repeat that, free training. Didn't we uh, say before the thing we all liked free <laughs> before the hangout? So the agents are getting free training, and they should be really appreciative that Matthew is kind enough to come on here and share his skills and do this. So I just want to thank you in the middle. Um, and just, yeah, continue on. I, I, I'm, yeah. I love this stuff. I can't get enough of this. So, I just so want Calvin, to tell, you. Us your, tell, us your, tell us again your concerns. Well, you. actually, listening to Renee, um, I think mine may be a little different. I had enough time to think. Um, so uh, thanks for going first. No. Um, <laughs> but I think mine's a little different. I, I don't think it's so much as much as me afraid to make phone calls. I know my time blocking is horrible. I do need to time block more. But again, it's overcoming that objection of how do you beat the big dogs. And then when we get that appointment, you know, building an effective listing presentation. I have probably tried working on a listing presentation for almost two years now and still don't have one in place. Um, and there's really nothing online that shows you how to put in a, a really good effective one together. So that's been my biggest setback is is how do you overcome those big dogs, the ones that are going to buy your home if they don't sell it, or the ones that give you a free margarita machine and all this other stuff. Let me ask you a question, Calvin. Let me ask you a question. So um, how many for sale by owners are you contacting every single day, every single week right now? As of right now, I have not contacted um, any. Right. Well, I contacted one today, and I actually got the listing. 
It was, oh, wow. face, it was off Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> my wife sent my wife sent me a message and said, That's "Hey, so well, let's see if you can help them." So I contacted them, and she said she had talked to several agents, um, but she invited me over there, sat down with her, and she said, "Yeah, the, they wanted to list with me." That's so actually interesting. So you can already you can already see that your story is not actually that effective. You had a great listing presentation, and she said yes. So um, I think that there's a couple things that are going on, but. Do you have your list of the? Um, do you have your list of the unconscious reflexes there? Yes, yes, that's, that's okay. what I was telling you. Tell me, tell me what unconscious reflexes you think are are getting in the way here. Um, my main one is um, reflex of avoiding failure. I, that my unconscious reflex of avoiding failure. I I'm so afraid of failing. All right. Um, desire to fit in, and then um, following rules that don't exist. I think. I think you. I think you are definitely following rules that don't exist, <laughs> no doubt. And I think that there is a fear of failure thing, and a and you know fear of failure and desire to fit in. Those two go together. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you through um, something that I call the the failure to fortune formula. So I want to show you how to start to turn your fear of failure around and start to turn it into more fortune for you. Okay. So a couple of um, recontextualizations that I'd like to uh, to start with. Okay, you began by saying, um, you know, m my issues are are a little bit different. You know, how do I compete with the big dogs? They've got all these special things. They, you know, they're I just don't have a way to compete with them. And on top of that, I don't have a very effective listing presentation. I've been looking for two years to see if I could put a great listing presentation together. And then if we go all the way back to the beginning. There was also something you said about um, I'm I'm afraid that we're going to get in there. We're going to price it too low. Then they're not going to list with yes. us because we were too aggressive on our pricing. Given where the market is in this moment, right? It's mm -hmm. a it's a moving target for sure. Right. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with a series of processes and questions that are going to help to untangle some of this because the truth of the matter is um, everything that you just said is smoke and mirrors. And who is swinging out of the jungle every time you want to try and call for sale by owners? A drunk monkey. A drunk monkey. So um, the first thing is this. We want to question the validity of the drunk monkey's point of view. This is step one. We're going to question the validity of the drunk monkey's point of view. And we got to be willing to learn. Then we got to be able to be a scientist. We're going to put our, our focus um, on other people instead of us. We're going to celebrate and acknowledge the power of failures. We're going to accept the worst case scenario. We're going to release attachment. That's the process we're going to go through right now. This is a, a, a system that you use to get yourself to move past these kinds of things. So we're going to start off by questioning the validity of the drunk monkey. Are you ready for that? Yes. All right, here we go with that process. It's a series of questions that I'm going to ask you right now. And I'm just going to that part of the system. Here it is. Um, how do you know that you can't compete with the big dogs if you have not called any for sale by owners to see if you are competing? I don't. I know. Great. So where did this information come from? Uh, myself, obviously. Yes. The way to state that properly is, I made it up, Matthew. Okay. I made it up, Matthew. <laughs> 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 Sorry, um, I made it up. Yeah, you made it up, didn't you? Yes. Let's be honest, and and if we're being completely honest, you didn't make it up. <clears throat> the drunk monkey whispered it in your ear, and then you took the drunk monkey as reality and truth. <clears throat> you listen to the drunk monkey like it is your friend, but let's be honest, Calvin, the drunk monkey is not your friend. If we're being real honest, the drunk monkey don't even like you. It makes fun of you. It says, your listing presentation sucks, and you can't price property, and you're never going to be able to compete with these people. Right? It's got a whole list of why you're bad and wrong, and you're never going to succeed, and, and you're never going to achieve. Yet, you're not doing anything to put it to the test. So let me ask you this. How do you know that your listing presentation is not effective exactly as it is? Because I haven't been happy with it. And, and did you did you go and do a listing presentation today and take a listing with a for sale by owner today? 
I took myself. I actually didn't take any paperwork, any presentation in there with me. I just took myself. Right. And are you noticing that you have the skills to do it? Yes. I see where you're getting at with this now. <laughs> um, yes. Did you take the listing? Yes, I did. Yeah. You took the listing. Okay, great. Just want to make sure that you can distinguish this. Okay. The next thing I wrote down is um, with the for sale by owners and the competing with the big dogs who have all the tricks and they're giving away a a margarita machine and I'll buy your house if it if it doesn't sell blah, 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 right whatever it is um, mm -hmm. can you tell the future do you know what's gonna really happen if you start calling for sale by owners Do you have any idea what's really gonna happen no not not at all no why why do you not have any idea because we can't see the future obviously and you've never done it right right you don't do it consistently you don't know you may have done it in the past but you're not doing it consistently you're not really um, finding out the data instead you're utilizing one of the most amazing aspects of our survival system and that is the ability to forecast a dog does not have that ability so a dog runs over to a dead carcass and chews it up and eats it blah, 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 blah. and then it goes into the dog's stomach and if it is not the right food for the dog blah, blah, it throws it up a human being is totally different a human being walks over to the carcass looks at the carcass I'm not so sure about that forecasts what might happen and then decides not to eat the carcass that is a very powerful survival situation very powerful survival skill that is currently screwing you out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. It is your survival mind gone wrong. And you're losing because of it. And you have been listening to the drunk monkey and it's time for you to stop. Okay? So let's now move to the next phase of our process. I'm scrolling down to the to the next part of the system here. We're using the failure to fortune formula. So the next part is this. Are you willing to learn, Calvin, or do you want to continue to hallucinate and pretend that you have psychic powers? No, I'm always willing to learn. I feel like education is a big part of this business. And I, and I acknowledge you for getting yourself on this call and being a part of this and, and going through it publicly. It's taken a lot of courage, and I have a feeling that it's going to be a huge breakthrough for you and Renee that you have been willing to do this. So congratulations to you and Renee. So the next thing that is on the failure to fortune formula is to run an experiment and see who's right. Okay. Is the drunk monkey right? No. Or is your, well, we don't know. No, I don't know yet. <laughs> Might be. We don't know. We can't, we can't predict the future, so we're just going to run an experiment. Let's see what happens. So here's what I'm going to request that you do. I request that you do a 100 for sale by owner experiment and that your experiment has these elements. One. Okay, let me type this one on. Okay, great. Very simple. It's, <laughs> it's not going to be very complex here, okay? okay? So Renee has a different experiment. Renee is just going to call them. She's going to verbally vomit all over them with a script she doesn't know. Blah, 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 blah. And she's going to see, after 10 people, did anyone scream at her and yell at her? And if they did, how long did it take to recover? She's just trying to understand that process. You, on the other hand, are in a different zone. So your job is to use the presentation like you did today with the lady on, that you met on, for sale, on Facebook, okay? okay? So you're going to, you're not going to make a snazzy presentation. You're not going to look for any new presentation material. You're going to keep your presentation exactly as it is for the for sale by owners. You can upgrade it everywhere else. Okay. But with the for sale by owners, you're going to talk to for sale by owners, 100 of them. You're going to then make presentations to the ones that would like to have be presented. And you're going to see one thing and one thing only. How many of the for sale by owners went to you and how many people went to the for sale by owners that bribed them with things that you're unwilling to bribe them with, margarita machines and buying their houses, et cetera, et cetera. That's all we're going to do. Do you understand the simplicity of this experiment? Right. And just to clarify, this is to not call 100, but talk to 100, correct? 
That's right. You want to talk yeah. to 100 of them. Okay. Contact 100 of them. Yeah, you're going to talk to 100 of them. Otherwise, what, what experiment are we running if we just leave a message or whatever? That's a different, that's a different experiment. This is just you seeing what happens when you are being you, talking to for sale by owners, being a helpful, great guy who's committed in, uh, to, to helping them get their home sold. That's it. Now, would I recommend that you um, study some for sale by owner processes? Yes, I would recommend that you do that. Because really what's on the line here is not getting the appointment. Getting the appointment, you should do some studying on. Just look and see who has some great techniques there. But really what is on the line is your listing presentation versus the competition's presentation. That's really what you're testing. And can I do my listing presentation and get listings at a, at a price that will cause them to sell, or do I lose them all to people who price them too high and give them free stuff? Hmm. Isn't that your concern? That is, yes. I mean, I'm going to do a presentation that sucks, that they won't agree with, I'm going to price it too low, and they aren't going to choose me. And the other competition is going to do a great presentation that I don't know about, but I've been researching for two years and can't find. There's some standard that I have that hasn't been met. And they're going to overprice it. It'll still sell, and they'll give them free stuff. This is the hypothesis, isn't it? Correct. So you've got to put that to the test 100 times and see what happens. So go and study some how to deal with for sale by owner, how to get for sale by owner appointments. Um, material, I'd recommend you do that. It'd be a good idea. Here's the next thing on our failure to fortune formula. So first we question the validity of the drunk monkey. Next we are open to, we, we declare I'm willing to learn. Third, we are a scientist and we run an experiment. Then fourth, we're going to take the focus off of you and we're going to put it on to them. Okay. So I'm going to run down a bunch of questions that I recommend that you ask for sale by owners or ways of operating with for sale by owners, okay? okay. I'm going to just run them down. You can watch them again on the video. You don't need to write them down, okay? So you want to ask questions that illuminate the challenges that they are facing and maybe they're not even aware of. So you're going to say, um, I'm just calling to see if you've received any offers yet. Did you do a, an open house last weekend? How many people came through? You're going to talk to them like they're a realtor because, in, in essence, Calvin, aren't they being a realtor if they're for sale by owner? Correct. So Correct. don't talk to them like they're competition. Talk to them like they are a fellow realtor. The exact same thing you say, like, how, what did you do with the pricing there and how are you marketing that? And you would talk, you would have a, you would have a reasonable conversation about what they're doing to be effective. So you might say, what do you, um, how many people came through last weekend when you did your open house? What are, you, what are you doing to follow up on them? What new marketing are you putting in place this week? Have you made any price adjustments? What are the buyers saying about the house? Are you getting a bunch of realtors calling you? How are you handling that? I don't know. If your home doesn't sell, what are you going to do? How much time are you going to give yourself before you decide to uh, list with the realtor? You know, what will determine when it's the right time? What are the qualities that you're looking for in a realtor? But nine questions. Just questions that, that open themselves up or, or get them to open themselves up and questions that are about them, not you. So it's not you going like, well, I'm amazing and I'm going to give you a toaster when the home sells and we're so phenomenal, we'll buy your house. right? That's, that's all about you. You want to ask questions that are all about them. All right, so the next part of the process, my friend, is to celebrate and acknowledge the power of your failures in the past. So you were telling us a little bit about your your process here, and you were saying, my gosh, um, you know, when I first started in 2005, I started working for GMAC, and I made no sales whatsoever. Remember? Two years, for two years. For two years. Did you learn something from that? I quit real estate and got out of it. <laughs> yes, you did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And did you yes. learn something from that? Yes. What did you learn when you didn't make any sales for two years, and then you quit and got a, a you know, real job. What was, the, what was the transformation that occurred that had you get some chutzpah, get back into real estate, and now you're kicking some butt? What did you learn? Um, I learned that I never really saw what my full potential was. and I never took a chance to find out what I could really do in real estate. 
you learned that risk was important, didn't you? Yes. And that you needed tenacity and you needed persistence. What else did you learn about yourself and about life and about real estate in that time? I also learned that um, being educated and knowledgeable in this business is very, very beneficial. Um, that, that, and, and this is something I tell my team too, it's not that we're better than other agents, you know, but some agents do outgrow other agents and learn and, and tend to do a little better because they are more knowledgeable. So I took tons of classes, I interviewed different brokerages when I got back in and um, I just went for it. And you, so you learned a ton about the business, but you mm -hmm. also learned a ton about yourself. Correct. And what did you learn about yourself? That if I push myself, I can actually um, achieve some, some pretty extreme goals. Yeah, if I push myself, I can achieve some extreme goals. Awesome stuff. So failure was really an important part of the process, wasn't it? Correct, yes. I mean, let's be honest, guys. Um, a successful person is someone who is simply managing a tremendous amount of failure all at once. So if you look at the most successful people, what you see is people who are failing more than other people. That a setback is just a setup for a comeback, and that's it. Got it. So can you, can you accept that failure has led you to the success that you are having today, Calvin? Absolutely. And that it was an important part? Yes. yes definitely. And with For Sale by Owners, would you be willing to address failure again in order to go through the process of learning what it's going to take to turn this into an income source? Yes. Mm -hmm. How many For Sale by Owners do you think you could do if you were really consistent? How many listings do you think you could take each year and sell? I've never looked at it that far into an annual, but I think if I really was if I was consistent about it and I really went hard at it, I could probably take anywhere from 15 to 20 a month. If you really went hard at it, you could do 15 to 20 a month. Let's so. say let's say that um, it's just the 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 um, a medium um, home run, right? A medium home run would be that you take one every week. If you took one new listing every week, and let's say um, you know, 75% of those sell, so 52 times 0.75, so if 39 actually sell, what's your average commission? 3%. Uh, right now, I'm receiving 100% with no splits. Well, so what is the, what's the dollar amount, average dollar amount off the top of your head? I'd say about 185. So what's that in commission? I don't, I, I, I'm not that fast. With what, what do you get on your normal pay? Check. Looking for the number where you're checking. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, typically anywhere from 35, roughly about 35 to 100 to 4,000 somewhere. All right. right. So let's let's say it's 3750 average. <clears throat> That's an extra 146,250 dollars a year. Divide that by 12. That's another 12,187 dollars a month just from this one particular revenue stream. Would you be willing? to experience the failure and the learning process to be able to find your way to another $12,000 every single month. Absolutely. <clears throat> and Absolutely. the money that you're making today, isn't the money that you're making today really in essence um, on the heels of the failure of your original failure of the business? That is correct, yeah. That the original failure actually taught you something that gave you more persistence and more tenacity this time around, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Could we say, thank God for that failure? Yes. Oh, yes. That that failure was one of the most important things that happened to me in my real estate business. I had to, I had to understand how little I believed in myself. And I had to understand how important it was to believe in myself. Hmm. To take risk. And believe it or not, that was a driving factor that got me back into real estate, and I think I forgot that. It's time for you to reconnect with that again. Would you be willing to do a 100 for sale by owner contact um, experiment where you're testing my listing presentation against the listing presentation of the mega agents who are overpricing it, under commissioning it, 
giving away free stuff, me against them, to see what would happen. Are you willing to do that experiment, fail your way through the process, and get to a place where you can add $12,000 every single month to your, to your revenue? Yes. Great. And are you willing to give your word that you will take that on for the next six months because it's probably going to be a six, seven month process? Absolutely. I was actually thinking maybe trying it in three months. Okay. I, li I like the chutzpah. That's what, I'm, that's what I want. Yeah. So you have got a taste now of some of the techniques and the mindset methodology. I think we did about four or five of them on this particular um, call this week. We always start with um, uh, you know, releasing attachment. That's one of the most important ones. But you can see we have a lot of different things that we can work on to get you to unblock and unlock. And so with that, I want to thank the both of you for, for letting me take you through this process publicly. I know that this is some intense stuff. So I'm going to pass it over to Jeff and Frank and let them finish this whole thing up. Can I ask one question, though? Can, yeah, we follow, worry, buddy. Oh. can we follow up with you and send you our results in the three months? 100% yes. Just go to topagentmindset.com and click on the uh, contact me, and then you'll get right to me. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. Thank yeah. you. That was a full hour, Matthew. That was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I think we're kind of running up against the hour, and uh, so we're probably not going to have time for some Q&A because uh, I think Matthew's on a tight schedule. But I wanted to thank Matthew again for coming on here and offering free training and just being kind enough to do that. And if you guys want to find out more information about Matthew, go to the topagentmindset.com. It's topagentmindset.com, right, Matthew? I That's know you just right. said it. And Jeff, can I just say one more thing? If you do yes. have questions and you want some, uh, you want to think some things through, feel free to reach out to me on my Facebook fan page at Top Agent Mindset also. And <clears throat> Happy to, to chat with you and, and um, wrap about the things that we talked about here. Yeah. And, okay, thanks, Matthew. And I wanted to also thank both Calvin and Renee for being... You guys can hear me, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, sometimes I mute myself. I wanted to thank uh, Calvin and Renee for being so courageous and coming on here and doing this in a public forum. It takes a lot of courage. If you guys can come on here and, and open up to Matthew like you did, Calling for sell by owners and working for sell by owners is going to be nothing. So please um, follow. These. I mean, really, um, what you just went through and the intense training that he just gave you, calling for sell by owners is nothing. R wouldn't you agree, Matthew? It, it, well, listen, it is. Um, it still feels like something. And that first call will be a, sure. a pain, but the experiment itself will help a lot. Prove yeah. who's right. You are the drunk monkey. So, yeah, so I want to thank you guys again for being so courageous and also wanted to let the audience know that September 10th, mark in your calendar September 10th, we're going to have Matthew on again and we're going to go over mindset and skills to list expired listings. So that's going to be a whole nother revenue stream and expireds are great too. So that's a whole nother one. I've, I've built a whole living on it for, for years. And then October 1st, um, we're going to be doing a mindset and skills to work your center of influence, past clients. That's a whole other mindset and skill to work them to get referrals and, and follow up with them. So I want to thank everybody for uh, joining us and thank our guests and thank Frank and his guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. Aloha. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Thank you, guys.